Welcome back to OMG The Cloud. Today we're going to finish up our HA proxy configuration and put a website behind it. So let's dive in and check that out. The first thing you'll probably notice from our previous configuration is we need to enable HA proxy. So you'll see this service is not running yet. So let's finish that up. So let's go to services, HA proxy, settings, and let's go ahead and enable HA proxy. Maximum connection, set that to 1000. Scroll down and under tuning, go ahead and set this to 2048 and hit save and apply. And now we can see the HA proxy service is actually running. So the next thing we wanna do is actually put a web server in our environment so that we have something to point traffic at. Uh, if you were following along in the previous video, we set up the backend service to point at an IP in the DMZ, which we configured earlier in this series as part of our VLAN configuration. So let's take a quick look at that. If we pop into that virtual machine, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a container. This is Containius, who am I container? This is just a really basic web server, which is really great for testing. It's lightweight. And of course, we are doing everything in containers whenever possible. So uh, if you have been following along in my container series, you should be up to speed as well. If you're not, go ahead and check that out. Let's pop over to that server and let's take a look. I have a basic config file here. Now, another thing you'll learn in the container series is I always like to define things, no matter how small they are, in a Docker Compose YAML file. I don't like to run things directly from uh, the Docker run command. They're just not repeatable, very difficult to troubleshoot once you have a container running. Uh, this is really the right way to do it. Properly define your containers from files, and then they're repeatable and much easier to troubleshoot. This will make your life a lot easier. So in here, we just have a basic configuration file, version 2.0 file, and under services, we have the Who Am I service. This is the image that it's gonna be running from. And at the very minimum, we need to define a port. So the outside port, which is what we talk to from outside of the host is 8080, and that's going to translate it or essentially NAT it to the inside port, which is 80, typical web server. So with that saved, you're gonna to need to have Docker and Docker Compose installed. I also recommend that you add your running user to the Docker group. That'll mean you can run Docker directly without having to prefix it with sudo. This is how you would do that. Just sudo usermod-a-g docker, which is the group, and then my user. You'll need to sudo in to make that change, and it's done. And you do need to log out and log back in for that change to take effect. So we can go back into our well, my folder, and now we should be able to do a docker dash compose up space dash D. And it's gonna go ahead and create that container. It needs to pull all those different image layers down. Again, this is covered in detail in my Docker container series. So you can check that out. Uh, this is a pretty small container, so it's up and running pretty quick. And once it's up, we can do a docker PS to see running containers, and we see it's up and running. So now let's pop over to a browser here. Let's see if this is up and running. I did go ahead and create a DNS entry so that the FQDN on my actual network outside of our virtualized PFSense will resolve to that web server name. So that was website.omgthecloud.com. If we hit that, ah, look at that. So the Who Am I container is a very lightweight container, as we said. This is its actual output. So we can see that this is proxying through our HA proxy. This is, this is great. We know it's working. And if you look closely here, you'll see we do have a real SSL certificate. It is secured. We can actually take a quick peek at that. We see that it's verified by Let's Encrypt. That is the certificate we created earlier in the series. So we're off and running. So our next step is we might want to also load balance this a little bit too. Building on what we already have, let's pop back over to our container. So let's do docker compose stop. And just as a matter of practice, I'm gonna do docker compose remove. It's gonna actually completely remove that container. And then let's edit that again. And let's add a second instance of who am I? There we go. Who am I too? Same image. I'm gonna give it a different port number. Otherwise it'll conflict. Put on 8081. Save that, exit out, and let's start it up again. So docker-compose up-d. We're creating two services now. Let's see those, docker ps, and there they are. And if we look closely, you can see that's 8081 and 8080 on those two containers. Let's go ahead and pop over to our HA proxy. 
all we need to do is add in a second backend. So go to services and go to HA proxy backend tab. And we're going to take our existing backend. And all we need to do is add an additional server to this. Hit the arrow. I'm going to call it OMG Web 02. It's going to be the same IP address because it's the same Docker host. However, if you recall, we're running on 8081. And that is it. Hit save and apply. And you'll see the number of servers in this backend service is now two. If we go ahead and pop over to our browser session here, if we just refresh this guy, we're gonna get, as we refresh this, we're gonna get different host names. And you'll see that top host name there as I F5, you know, refresh this guy. It's gonna flip flop between those two hosts. So that tells us that we're working. We're successfully load balancing between two different backend web servers that are hosting the same service and and that's it. We're in good shape. So thanks for tuning in. This is a short one. We're going to build upon this a little bit more in the next one. So stay tuned. Please go ahead and like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see additional types of content and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.